So that's kind of the context. And I've been working on this. And what I'll do is I, I don't want to violate more than 15 minutes, so I'll kind of go in and out of the speech and kind of give you some of the context. Because this thing could really, I could go an hour, or I can squeeze it down to 30 minutes. It depends how granular I want to get with this. So what I do is I start by asking the audience, and I'll ask you the same question. How would you complete this sentence? In my wildest dreams, I never imagined I would. Just think about that. I'm pretty old, like the rest of us. There's got to be something that you just said. In my wildest dreams, I never imagined I would go somewhere, do something, be something, move someone. Do something that you just, there's no way you could have planned and put this together. Then what I do is I go through some of my imagined, I never imagined I would do X, Y, Z, three or four items. Then what I would do is go through a little bit of a litmus test as to why there's no way I could have planned this because of limitations that I have on myself or limitations that I have that there's no way I could do this or plan this because of just who I am, because of my limited understanding. And then I'd ask to reverse that and then put this back into your thought process, which is, that's my story. My story has a jaded past, a good past. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. But what's your story? What are you bringing to today? And what are you going to do with what you've got today into tomorrow? And what I'm really talking about is God's will, right? I can tell you, each and every one of us, I don't care how old you are or how young you are, you still want to know God's will. The problem is we have the Jesus take the wheel attitude of, what's God's will? Just show me. Just That's all. I'm just going to sit back and wait for it. Well, God's will comes to you, I think, in a two-way conversation, in a two-way communication. I've got a job to do. God's got a job to do. And that job is to show me my will, but I've got something I've got to do. So in finding God's will, there's a lot of prayer involved, and there's a lot of listening involved, and there's a lot of the Holy Spirit. But for me, what works is I've kind of broken it down into there are four steps that you have to go through. First step is you have to find your why. Second step is you have to know your talents. Third step is you have to set some goals. And the fourth step that kind of, believe it or not, brings it all together is you have to be able to be departed from that or be a uh, uh, dis, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pardon me, separated? Kind of separated from that, yes. Disassociated. Departed. Sorry? He said disassociated. Yeah. Disengaged. So, yeah. You, you, so you have to be kind of away from that. What I do then is I really get very, almost granular with the why. And I'll ask you, what is your why? My guess is many of you never even thought about what's my why. If you work at a company, there's a company why. It's called the mission statement. We're here to do dot, 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 dot. Dot, dot. Right? What's your why? Your why is your motivator. If you haven't defined what your why is, it's really hard to be motivated about what you're doing. I've seen a lot of speakers. I've listened to a lot of secular speakers, motivational speakers, religious speakers, and there's a common theme, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but the common thing is they do a phenomenal job of covering what and how. <coughs> Even in the uh, father's thing, what and how were covered really well. What I'm saying to you is you need to figure out your why. Why do you want to move in a direction? Why do you want to do these things? Can I give a little story and example, because I kind of do this every once in a while, but I like to keep the why as simple to understand as possible. So this morning I was walking in the building, and what if 
one of you other guys or someone else in the church here. But we just hit the building, or I'm not sorry, but hit the door area at the same time. I'd open the door, and that person passed right through and not say a word to me. Now there was a day when I would say, yeah, you're welcome there, pal. Just keep walking. <laughs> or I might say, uh, thank you. So here's my question. Why did I open the door in the first place? See, because as soon as I got upset, I now put a condition on that act, right? I'll open the door for you under one condition. You say and acknowledge me and say thank you to me. When you have a well-defined why, guess what? You almost want somebody to just brush you off like this, right? And you can say, God, then maybe you made an impact in that person's life. Or it's like Cubby, understand where they're coming from. Maybe that person just found out that they've got six months to live and they're just obliterated and they have no idea even that somebody was at the door, let alone that there's a door in of itself. But yet, I wanted the conditional, at a boy, way to go. So that's a big part of why. Why is important. The other part of why that is so, uh, you, in this speech I say it over and over again, your sin and your glory is in your why. Your sin and your glory is in your why. And you find that by following your money and your time. Where's your money going? Where's your time going? That'll define your why. Because many times we make choices either one of two ways. One is that you want some gratification or you want to avoid pain. Many of our decisions we make every day is in those two things. So when you have a well-defined why, you know this is right, this is wrong. You just draw that line in the sand and say, this is who I am and this is what I stand for. My why is that I'm going to use my, I'm sorry, I'm going to use the God-given talents that I've been entrusted with to the best of my ability for the glory of God. That statement comes up time and time again as we go further. So the next thing I move into is what are your talents? And I get away from saying what are your talents and ask you to write down what are your interests? Personally for me, I'm a woodworker. I build furniture. I've been doing it for, boy, since I was probably 15, 13 years old. I wasn't real good, but I was interested in it. And what has happened is, I've become better and better and better. Now that's a talent that I've developed, but it's an interest that was really in my heart that I just love doing. So don't focus on what are you good at or what are you not good at. You think, you think about what are you interested in? What do you like doing? And it doesn't matter what it is. God's going to put that in your heart and the Holy Spirit is going to talk to you in prayer. So the third part is setting goals. You have to set goals. This is what I, I kind of make fun of that Jesus take the wheel because I struggle with my goals. I want to set these goals. I want to do this and this and this and this and this. But they have to be separated, right? And I personally separate them into spiritual goals personal goals, professional goals. And I do this little thing called throwing up on paper. I get three pieces of paper separate, and I write spiritual on one, personal on the other, professional on the third. And I just, everything up. I don't care what, if it's just a minute, minuscule thing, I'm gonna write those goals down, okay? Do the same thing with my professional goals. And I go into a few examples of each and how this works. One of the examples is, and, and I, I always say this because, you know, as, as Catholics and as Christians, um, you know, we are not supposed to praise money. But what if we set a goal to make a million dollars? Here's my question to you, is that a bad goal? Think about that. Is that a bad goal to want to make a million dollars? Well, let's look at our why. What's our why? If it's to make a million dollars so that I can show my neighbor that I can own a Porsche just like he's got, eh, probably not a good goal because my why is glorifying me with that million dollars, right? What about revenge goals? I got a goal, I want to be CEO in a year, okay? Why? Well, it's revenge because the people that I work for now, I can't stand them and I'm gonna leapfrog over them they're going to work for me, and I'm going to play hell on them like they played on me. Is that a good goal? Maybe not. 
But think about some of the, not good, but I, it is what I know, two of the most successful, the biggest companies in the world right now, the impetus, the germ that started those companies was revenge. Apple and Facebook. Think about it. Revenge is bad. But if you kind of turn it into a positive thing and not look at it as revenge, but I can do this. And I and I you know really try to do that. So we kind of go through those mental exercises there because I really want you to think about doing your part. You can't just say, God, what's your will and just show me. No, you he's giving this stuff to you. You've got to do this in prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to yell at you all talk to you and be able to know what's in your heart that you move forward with this. And the last part of this is that, that separation. Okay, that detachment to the results. Set the goals, have your why, know what your talents are, but you have to be detached from the results. What does that mean? I can't tell you how many times, and I'm sure every one of us can go through the same thing, where you know we've had a goal, we've had an ambition, we want to do this, okay? And let's say, let's use the million dollars. I'm gonna set the goal to make a million dollars because my family needs the money, because there's some heartache or some physical thing going on, and I wanna be able to pay for their, uh, for the hospital bills or whatever that is. And that's our goal. Let's say the only, not the only amount of money, but let's say next year I want to make a million dollars and I make a hundred thousand. Did I fail? What depends? Did I work hard at making that million dollars? Yes. But many times if I'm detached from the million dollars, but I'm very engaged into working towards that goal, God's going to open up other doors and he's going to close some doors. And it typically always works or it just fans out. And then you start thinking, wow, I never imagined it would become this. So the detachment part is extremely important because we think we've done it if we're not attached. When we're not, when we're not attached to the result of that goal, it's God's will. It's God's grace. It's our work. But it's that detachment from achieving or not achieving. And so that's, again, in a nutshell, that's 10 minutes, 12 minutes. There's a lot of layers to that. There's a lot of exercise really that I think is important to do because understanding your why, knowing what that why is and living it every day is so hard. But, you know, as I mentioned, your why is your motivation and without a why, any distraction comes in. And the one thing I really talked about in that is if you're doing a Google search on whatever, and you get these little prompts on the side that are just teasers. What's your why? What's that distraction? You're going to click on that? Pornography is a big thing in our society. It's a big thing with all of us. You've got to clearly define why you know you're not going to click on anything like that. Or at least you'll understand that, hey, that's wrong. You know, you can't go through that mental exercise of, you know, it hurt. it's just me. It's kind of fun. The fact is, it hurts you badly. You know that. So that's kind of a nutshell. That's, you know, an overview. That's, I mean, we just hit that thing at 95 miles an hour. But I wanted to mention to Rick that this you know, as I speak in this, it's it's very pragmatic, it's very practical, and it's something that you could, as as a participant in that in that conference, you can go home and begin to work on some of these things. I plan to have you know an outline of, of what to do and how to do that, because once you it's kind of a self fulfilling thing. Once you're interested in the how and the why, I'm sorry, in the how and the what. You have to get started on the why. Why you want to do this and why you don't. Why don't you? 